This is James Holder for IFL TV. I'm in Hull State in Hull Town Hall. With me, I've got uh, Curtis Woodhouse, head of his British title fight against uh, Darren Hamilton. Something, to Curtis, how are you doing? Hi, mate. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Awesome. Talk to me a little bit about the fight. This is a massive opportunity for you. Yeah, brilliant. It's the one I've always dreamed about, the one I've always wanted. When I first came into the game seven years ago, uh, my dream was to become British champion, and I'm four and a half weeks away now from fighting for it. So I feel feel really blessed, um, grateful to the champion for giving me the opportunity. Um, I've got to go in there and take it. I understand I'm a, a big underdog and everyone keeps telling me I'm going to get beat. But my whole life I've been an underdog. <clears throat> when I was 10 years old and said I was going to be a professional footballer, they all laughed at me and I went and done it. And um, when I started off professional boxing, they all laughed at me and then said I was going to never achieve anything and I became the champion of England. So I'm, I've had a whole life of being an underdog. So to be an underdog for the next four weeks won't affect me at all. An underdog's a dangerous dog. Absolutely massive thing to be get to an elite level in one sport is hard enough, but to do it in two levels, you know, and, and compete and, and the way you have it, it's credit to yourself, coach, really, your determination and your ability to learn new skills, you know. Thank you. Yeah, everyone, I always say that my, my best attribute is my. Um my capacity to learn, my willingness to learn, um, and that's what's held me in good stead, especially coming into a sport that, you know, if you ask Dave Caldwell, one of the top five worst people to ever walk through his door, I'm definitely in that top five, you know, so I've had to start that's from crazy. absolute scratch, um, but my ability to learn to take the punishment, especially in boxing, you, you, you learn by getting punched in the face, so I've had to take my licks over the years, sparring kids that are miles better than me, fighting kids that are miles better than me, and I have to kind of learn on the job, you know, against your Frankie Gavins, Derry Matthews. Who's Steffi Bull when I boxed him in my 11th fight and had 46 fights I think in his hometown I need a police escort after, out of there after knocking him out you know so I, I've, I've learned on the job you know and Dale Miles got I got knocked out in five rounds he broke my nose and fractured my cheekbone in the second round and I had three more rounds getting punched in the face with a double fracture to my cheekbone you know so it's been a tough tough road and I've had to learn on the job and, 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 you know, them setbacks have, have led me all to this one moment. How important has David Caldwell been to your boxing career? How much how much belief has he instilled in you? V very important. If I've not, um, you know, sometimes it, it's fate. If I've not walked into Dave's gym, I don't know where I'd have been because Dave stripped me down and basically taught me the basics. You know, even though it sounds mad now, we're talking jab, footwork, just little tiny things which are a massive thing, which I, I couldn't do when I first went there. I was all over the place. So. He, he's, he's, he's brought me along from scratch, and also as a as a promoter and a manager, you look how many how many promoters would hang on to a fighter with six losses. With, with boxing, it's like a conveyor belt. You lose, the next one comes along. Very um, true. Yeah, but Dave stuck by me through the losses because um, he's believed in me, and you know he's he's managed, promoted me, and trained me in some capacity, pretty much. Um, well, my whole career, apart from my first fight. So you know he's been he's been alongside me for, for most of it. So. You know, I want to win this not just for me, but for the people that have helped me along the way as well. My sponsors, I've had um, Whitestone solicitors that have sponsored me straight from straight from the beginning who have helped me and really stood behind me. You know, I want to win it for them as well because they've, they've put a lot into it. I just feel like I need to give them a little bit back. You've said no matter what, even if you win the British belt, out yeah. right, uh, British belt against Darren Hamilton, you're going to retire yeah. from the sport. Can you see yourself actually winning that belt and retiring? Is that something that goes through your mind? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, that's what I said to myself. And you know, I'm not I'm not a conventional person. You look at my life; it's not it's not meat and two veg. Girls here, there, and everywhere. And that's a dream is to go out as champion. You know, because some fighters stay stay too long. A fighter knows when it's when it's time to go. And I, and I know when my time's to go, but normally it's the last, last to uh, admit it. A lot of fighters stay in the game for money. I made that mistake in football. I stayed, I stayed in football too long for the money. So I've learnt my, learnt my lessons. I don't want to stay in, in, in boxing for money. I want to get in, try and achieve my goals and get out and go and do something else. Football, boxing and sport doesn't define me as a person. My life's got a lot more. I've got a lot more to, to give. I want to I wanna coach. I want to pass back to young kids. I want to do things in Driffield. I, I, I just want to help a lot of people. So, you know, sport doesn't, doesn't determine me as a person. That I've got loads more to give after, after boxing and football. I've been a professional athlete for 17 years. I've given my life and soul to it. So, I'm due a rest. Listen, to come from the background you have, the only accounts in the state and drift field, and to channel it into a positive energy to have enough about you to become a professional football, let alone, that's a great achievement. So then give that up and not have really any direction in life and to start something new and then, as I said, to get to the level you have, you, you really should be commended for that, you know? Thank you. Genuinely, genuinely. It's, it's, it's been a hell of a ride and, 
I've got me. Well, I don't really know. If someone had told me it was going to be like this when I when I hung my boots, or I'm yeah, not yeah. sure whether I'd have done it. You know, because I've, I've I've taken my lumps along the way. But that's the only way you learn. You know, you've got to. If you ain't willing to take the punishment, then boxing is not for you. And unless you're, you know, a great great fighter that don't get hit. But, that's right. You know, few and far between, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. And I've got a good habit of blocking punches with my nose. So, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's been a tough seven years. But I've loved every second of it. It's been been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Listen, we've had carried on football. Don't know where it ended. Listen, I remember you on Football Manager. Must be 2001, maybe yeah, around them times. He was a good centre back, you know, Curtis. I'm not gonna lie, he was decent. I think he went Real Madrid. I, in, in I a always used to buy myself games. and give myself about 50 grand a week. Oh, you were decent. Yeah, just chill, yeah. You were decent. Like my mate Leon, Leon Britton, he plays for Swansea. Yeah, yeah. He's fortunate enough to go to my school. He's pretty decent now as well, you know. He yeah. went for a few seasons not being that great, got dropped, <laughs> but he's good. He is good. good Listen, um, what would be your one lasting memory of boxing? If I said to you, choose out one night, uh, not including the 22nd of February, because that's not written yet. But one night so far of your past career gone, just, just talk to me about that. I know everyone will think I'm going to say winning the English title against Dave Ryan, but it wasn't. The, the, one, the one night where I knew that I was, going to, I was going to do all right, I was going to be British champion, was the night I fought Dale Miles, who knocked me out in five rounds. Um, first round he broke my nose. My nose, I could see my nose under my right eye. It was wow. over here. Um, I remember sat on the stool after the first because he hit so hard it was unbelievable. We had these little horrible Everlast gloves on, yeah. which were eight ounce, and every time he hit me, it made me feel physically sick because he was hitting me that hard. The second round, I got a double um, fracture in my left cheekbone. And I was in so much pain. And I remember sat on my stool after two rounds. I, want, I wanted to bail out. Everything, in, everything inside me was telling me to quit, but I didn't. I sucked it up. And, and we went, we went at it for five more rounds. I remember waking up the next day in hospital <clears throat> after they'd reconstructed half my face, thinking, "Yeah, I've got what it takes." Because every fighter thinks he have, but until yeah. you put in that situation where That's it is right. sink or swim, every time he hit me, it felt like someone was putting a hot poker inside my face. I was in so much pain, but I had two choices: to, to stand and fight or sink and swim. And I, and I chose the right one. And I knew then and th there and then that I had what it took to be British champion. Listen, the injuries you sustained that night probably wouldn't have been looked out of place in a car crash. Yeah. So to carry on fighting, and as I said, take the shots you are, you, you know what kind of guy I think you are, you know? So Thank you. I respect that. Last thing, assessment. What do you see in Darren Hamilton that you, you, can, you can beat? Give me, give me something. He's, he's very, very good. He's got a very good jab. Um, very awkward. Underrated? Um, very underrated. Very underrated. You don't beat the people he's beat if you can't fight. You know, he's beat some top, top kids. Um, Listen, I'm not an idiot. I know I'm in for a tough, tough fight. Styles make fights, and style-wise, he's all wrong for me. But yeah. just destiny, I believe destiny. I'm getting myself in unbelievable shape. Wait, round after round, wave after wave. I'm going to keep sticking it on him, sticking it on him, and try and break him. You know, I can't fight any other way. I'm not going to outbox a kid. I'm not good enough. But wave after wave, I've got to stick it on him. One thing that I can do is punch. I hit hard enough to knock down. I was just going to say that. Do you, do you look at someone like Daryl Settlefield as maybe as an example of a way to beat Daryl? Yeah, but I mean, that was that was a lifetime ago. You know what I mean? It was a lifetime ago. You know, he, he, got, he got stopped by Darren, Darren Settlefield. I hit five times harder than Daryl Settlefield. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. It was a long time ago. Um, so I don't, I don't really, I've not even seen that fight. There's no interest in me. I've watched his last three or four fights, and he's a good, good fighter. Um, but I've just got to bite that gum shield and keep coming and coming and coming. And when the bell rings and my career's over, I want to be sat in the dressing room knowing I've given every ounce of blood, every drop, every heartbeat that I've got to win that British title, everything I've got. And um, if Darren's good enough to stand up to that, and fair play to him, he deserves to win his British title outright. If he isn't, then I'll be the new champ. Win or lose, promise me that we'll come down to Driftfield and film some stuff. Listen, we'll do want, something, you know. You don't what want mean? to be filming what I get to in Driffield. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely come down, man. Have a beer in my mum's pub and uh, yeah. we can reminisce. Listen, that sounds like my ideal Sunday to be honest. No more troll hunting on the firm. Every Twitter's been calm now, people leaving you alone. Twitter's never calm. There's always someone What's it about, one silly mate? comment away from me getting in the car. Yeah. Do you know what it is? I've got something to stand Colin on. I was just going to say to that. Absolutely An terrible. Disgrace. Can people, can, you know, he's, I read a tweet the other day saying, uh, I'm coming to your doorstep, you fucking coon. That's terrible. How can you say that to someone? Terrible. Terrible. You know, and 
Stan Collymore is, um, you know, he's, he's he's done things that. Yeah, he, he may not be everyone's cup of tea, but, but, but he doesn't deserve listen, that kind of treatment, does he? He don't deserve that. And, and Stan Stan Collymore's lucky that he's got that um, that um, that in him to to, to not to not do something about it. The police are a joke, they've done nothing. Twitter are yeah. a joke, they've done nothing about it. They should be embarrassed. You know, if I was Stan Collum, I know what I'd be doing. It, just, it, just it, won't, it won't be contacting the police. <laughs> These would be judge and jury. Say no more. Curtis, I wish you the best of luck with your fight. I hope you come out safe. It's been a great pleasure watching you and hopefully I can watch your journey go on. Thank whatever you. you decide to do. I appreciate it and thanks for all your support as well over the years and doing a great service to boxing. Like I said, us as fighters appreciate it because we, we don't get the headlines, it's all, it's all about football. So when we get a little bit of shine on us, we respect it. So thank you very Duly much. Duly noted. So what do you reckon, tennis next? Not bad at darts. <laughs> I'm being serious, I'm not bad. <laughs> not bad? Yeah, yeah, I uh, did 60 uh, checkout the other day, 20 Barry, the top. Barry Hearn, I know you watch IFL TV, have a word. Barry, might be a, so might be a good draw, you know. And I like the training schedule as well, straight to the pub. <laughs> you know, six hours of practice, few pints. That's the one. Stands right at mastery. That's the one. Yeah, it's a guy's top, top man. Thank That's you for giving me a bit of time today, mate. No problems, mate. And I look forward to catching you again soon. Take care, mate. This is James Holder with Curtis Woodhouse for IFL TV. Thank you. Cheers, mate.